because I get this all emails. It's a frequent question people ask all the time. And any other question about the Akira? Any other question about the fundamentals of Islam and anything? You don't understand something from the basic, like a shirk, kufr, and the bid'ah, because I'm going to be talking about a bid'ah, because the bid'ah is something like the worst disease. Mm. That's like a hidden stab of a shaitan, hidden stab. Mm. People even don't know that they keep continue doing that. So I'm going to talk about that. I don't hear you. Yeah, <coughs> what you're speaking about is basically what I've been seeing since I've been practicing Islam is people into the language without being into the spirit of uh, representing the deen. Like you were saying, a lot of people get shaitan come <coughs> in. Uh, my, point, uh, my point to come here was to make sure, because the, what I'm teaching you, what I'm telling you, this is a pure. Yeah. This is a pure. Right. Because a la ilaha, there is no ilaha, he's 100%. Because you probably have seen a people who are even saying a la ilaha, Muhammad Rasulullah, but still they are relying on some other things. Right. Like they have a maybe, uh, uh, what do you call that? One? They wear on the neck, they wear something here. Yeah. Some of them wear a rings. Yeah. They rely on different things. So that, that, that faith is not pure. So we have to fully rely on the Kalam actually, la ilaha, that, that's what it means. We fully 100% believe on Allah, and there is no God except one God. And uh, we believe, we promise Allah that we will follow the Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now in the second part, I'm going to uh, talk about more about that. Anybody has a question about shirk, kufr, or the bid'ah? Yeah. Anything, you wanna come here and say something, a few words, anyone? What you're saying is that if we follow our shaykh and, and you want to come here? Connecting it with what Prophet Muhammad. Come here. That, that's why I don't want you to eat the food, man. That's the reason I ask you not to eat the food. Oh no, food don't bother. You gotta die. Better, they gotta eat. Uh, <coughs> All right. What's your question? Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum. Alhamdulillah. Nama Shukran. Jum Bismillah. Rahman Rahim. When I'm basically what I was saying yeah, was love. that was, was that um, if a person is believing or practicing uh, uh, this according to uh, uh, a shake from a particular school and they not looking at the other school of thought or the like example that's, that's what where, that's like false worship like what school like Jaffe or or uh, 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 Sai Muslim, uh, you know, any Sorry, one of those particular methods, mm -hmm. uh, 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 <coughs> you know, they uh, is that proper Islam or is it proper, like you said, to uh, the the, the uh, look at the whole picture? Okay, I'm going to explain Muhammad something. Muhammad was like it was there the are Muhammad. You probably know that, as you mentioned, about the Jafriya, yeah. right? There's not only Jaffrey. I'm sure many of you know that, especially his, this brother is from Pakistan. He probably knows like how many sects we have in Pakistan. Okay. Lot of them, lot of them. Okay. Lot yeah. of them, like a division. Yeah. yeah. Everyone yeah. following their own scholar. Right. You know that, right? Okay. They have the elders, they start following that. Yeah, that's not But that's not they are thing. not on the right path. That's right. Because when you label here something, right? Yeah. You're telling yourself you belong to here. And if I say I do not belong to no one except la 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 Muhammad yeah. Allah, that means I'm following the proper teaching. But if I say, okay, wait, I am following, uh, this scholar was passed away like several, like a hundred years ago, mm -hmm. and we started some new teachings, and I'm following that teaching was very perfect, mm -hmm. you're away. Now let me give you an, uh, an ayah in the Quran. There's a beautiful ayah. Let's say in the Surah Al Imran, in the one, take a seat, brother. And let's say in uh, chapter 3, in uh, verse number 103, it says, That's what it keeps saying. Allah is, Allah is repeated that like three times in the Quran. And also it says in uh, Surah Al Imna, Al Inam, and uh, verse number is 153. And that's a beautiful verse. I like it. It says, It says, now there's a hadith in uh, Muslim Ahmad by, by the Sahaba named Jabir. 
and he explained the hadith was very, very important. Like for an example, how many of you drive? Who drives a car? You drive, right? Do you drive? Yes. You drive. You're going on a highway. When you're going on a highway, right, you're going to your destination. Let's say you started your destination, and your destination is Jannah. You keep going on a highway. That highway is Quran and Sahih Hadith. Please note this. Quran and Sahih Hadith. And there's also like fabricated Hadith, and there's also Mawdu Hadith, and like a lot of classifications in Hadith. But you need to stick with that Sahih Hadith. If some scholars you tell you to follow this, just say, just make sure this is a Sahih Hadith. It's not something else. And if you're going on a highway, you probably have seen like uh, there's a lot of exits. Exit, right? They're going to the towns and they are going to some big cities and somewhere. And according to Hadith, and the pro let me explain you about the Hadith, what the Hadith says. The Prophet ﷺ was sitting in the ground in uh, sand or something. So he was holding a stick. He draw a straight line on the ground. He said, this is Asrat Mustaqim, which is taking you straight to Jannah. Stick here. Do not go right and do not go left. And then the Prophet ﷺ, he make a cross line. So there is one straight line and he make a cross lines. Then he said, this is a straight way and there's a ways going left and the right. Left and right. The Prophet ﷺ said, stay there. Do not move. Do not make an exit. Do not make an exit. He said, on each exit, the shaitan is standing there, calling you, come here. I'm going to teach you Islam. Mm. I'm going to teach you Islam. Now, do you think the shaitan is going to be there with the thorns or something? <laughs> he will come in the form of what? Who to tell? Who's going to tell me that? Sign, He's going to come in the form of human being. Well, human being it could be anyone. And if you go in the Pakistan, right, the biggest fitna in the countries like Pakistan is the only country in the world which has the biggest fitna of Islam with there's so many sects in Pakistan. Everyone, they follow in their own scholar. That's what the Prophet ﷺ means. So let's say what Adi Shaitan looks like. Each of them will say, okay, I am this group, I am this group, and I am this group, and I'm going to this group, and if you follow me, I'm going to teach you something about Islam, which is going to come make you closer to Allah. Now, let me give an example. Let, let's go back in the history of Adam alayhi salam. What this Iblis told Adam? He said the reason Allah is not telling you to eat the food so you're going to be among the angels. So he misguided him. But he forgot the first commandment. The first commandment was, do not go there. So the first one was from Allah. The second one was from shaitan. And that's from how did he attack? And like our human being, we have two ways to shaitan attacks us. The biggest shaitan is over here. We, have, we call it like a devil whispers. Now, it will be really hard for any person to identify either what you, he's whispering to you in your mind. How are you going to identify he is right or he's wrong? Now, that's very tough. That's very tough. It's not for a common Muslim to understand if he's wrong or right, unless he has uh, very too much taqwa and he has too much knowledge about Islam. And that's the only person who's going to survive very lightly. But still, if you read in a, well, let me continue with the hadith first. So, so on all these exits, you will find the shaitan there. Scholar A, scholar B, scholar C, scholar C. You, you probably have seen that they're the biggest scholars and they have a big beards and they have big turbans. Like all of them different faces. What are these people doing? There's like thousands of people following one person. You probably have seen a lot of videos on a YouTube, like people are kissing their hands and they're going on their feet and doing this. So they are, all of them are misguided. So this is how shaitan deceive people, misguide them. Okay. Similarly, we have to stick what we are doing. 
if some scholar come to you, let me teach you, then you come with me and we're going to spend a few days and this and that. If you ask me what I'm teaching you, I'm not teaching you something new. I'm teaching you what Quran and Sayyidis teach you. That's what I'm teaching you. I don't have any other book except the Quran. If somebody doesn't have a Quran in his hand, he's teaching you something else, forget it. He's misguiding and he's misguiding other people also. Do not follow him. Do not even do that. You can pick up some good things he's teaching you, just pick up that and leave the other things. But do not follow what he's teaching you. But usually, your own nafs, you know nafs, right? Yeah. Your own inside constraints will mislead you also. Like you're a sinner person, come and go with him, and you're going to be very pious and this and that. You don't have to do nothing. You don't have to do nothing. Just do the way you're living your life. You have to live a life according to the sunnah. That's what the prophet said. <laughs>